Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I want to share my favorite trick for great voice leading in epic orchestrations. It's, it's deceptively simple. Okay, let's take a listen to this. I sketched it in Albion, strings left and right, winds and brass. We'll break it down in detail and talk about it, but first just listen to the result. Now, I'm going to just tell you that I didn't plan any of what you just heard there. It's a result of using one simple trick, seconds that expand to thirds. Let's take a look at this idea on the piano and then go back to this here. This is going to be a very quick review of intervals, and it's not terribly hard. Seconds are kind of compacted and dissonant. Thirds are what we call a imperfect consonance. Seconds and thirds sound a little bit like compression and expansion, don't they? You compact the dense second, and it wants to release outwards to a third. It's a very simple idea, and I think the only rule of voice leading that a person really actually needs to know. Second, third minor second, major third, or maybe second, third, major second, minor third. You may be guided by your ear to do all these things. You don't have to like even know the names of the notes. So how do we use this? Well, if you're going to do more than just orchestrate two notes at once, you have to have a scheme, and the scheme is a simple scheme. The scheme is called layers, or what my teacher called strata, like in geology, where you've got like a rock strata and then another rock strata. So let's say you have this second that you like. That's an F, and it falls down to an E. A second falls down to a third. If I want to add a second strata to that, I'm going to start my strata at a perfect consonance distance from the top note. So perfect consonances are fourths, fifths, and octaves. So this is a fifth. I'm going to start my second layer a perfect consonance away. I'm going to start it at C. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a third and then a second. So this top voice compacts and expands, this bottom voice starts expanded and compacts together. I can do it again. Now I'm compacted here, right? I'm going to go expand, keeping one of the same notes. I'm going to go compact, one, keeping one of the same notes. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So here's my first string layer, and as you can see, compact, expand. I keep one of the notes that I used before, compact, expand. I make sure one of the notes stays there, compact, expand. One of the notes stays there, compact, expand. I keep one of the notes, compact, and expand. Keeping one of the notes is a clever way to validate the sound of the next interval. It's called a preparation, but it totally works with your ear, and it's just the way we hear things anyway. Look at the second strata. So it starts with an expanded version, and then you get a 
compacted version. And with this one, I'm a little less um, careful to keep notes, but the world is still there. Remember, I just put this strata in. This layer is a perfect consonance away from the layer above. We're going expanded and contracted with this one. Well, you get the idea. Listening to them together and just hearing these two string parts, it reminds me of a barber's adagio for strings, really. I purposefully haven't analyzed these chords. I don't know, well, I don't know what these chords are. In fact, it's not so important what these chords are. I'm working within a mode, within one scale, and it's a saturated modal sound. It's ridiculously beautiful, and yet I just did it very intuitively, and you can too. Follow the mode, use that simple rule. So adding the woodwind part, you can see it's just scales. And again, I set off from a note that was a perfect consonance away from the strata above. Let's listen one more time, armed with a little bit more knowledge. Compact, expand. Some voices move in parallel, but you also get contrary motion. I've let things move wider and wider and wider for an expansive feeling. Emotional writing doesn't have to come from um, the intellect. A lot of the time, it has to come from a direct reaction to uh, what you're seeing on the screen or on the stage, or just a feeling from text. And that direct emotional reaction, you know, can be hard to manage when you're also sort of tangled up in picking notes. But my point is you don't have to think that hard. Begin with a simple rule, compression and expansion. Add a layer to that, separated by just something simple like a perfect consonants, a fifth, a fourth, an octave. Suddenly the two layers begin to interact and the complexity gets really interesting. If you just use a simple modal approach to your writing, you're gonna get gorgeous textures that have emotional contour and will just give you like almost perfect prepared dissonances, counterpoint, gorgeous thick chords. I still don't know what this harmony is. I know it's in F, you know, but it doesn't resolve to F, really. It kind of, where does it resolve? Oh, it has a very strange, I mean, at the very last moment, there's an F and an A, but there's also a G and a B flat. Thick. Hey, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. I can never say the word subscribe. Subscribe. Whew. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you should. <laughs> oh, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.